Senate OK's bill to allow 9-11 victims' families to sue Saudi Arabia. The Senate on Tuesday unanimously passed controversial legislation that would allow the families of September 11th victims to sue Saudi Arabia, one of America's regional allies, if they are found to be responsible for helping support the terror attacks. When you lose someone to such evil, the temptation is to curse the darkness. Senator Chuck Schumer, D. New York, one of a group of bipartisan lawmakers pushing the legislation, said during a press conference on Tuesday. These families have lit a candle, not only to bring justice to themselves but to send a loud message to foreign governments. If you help create terrorism on American soil, you will be brought to justice. Senator Lindsey Graham, our South Carolina, had been blocking this legislation but recently released his hold. The Senate passed the measure by unanimous consent. The 19 terrorists involved in the attacks were Saudi nationals. And we're joined out of Washington by Mr. James Jotras, former U.S. Senate foreign policy analyst. Mr. Jotras, why is the White House opposed to this bill? Because the White House is still wedded to the traditional policy, if we can call it that, of the bipartisan elite in the United States, which is essentially kowtowing to the Saudi regime, despite the fact that it's probably the worst government in the world, with the possible exception of North Korea. And the fact that the Senate was pass has passed this legislation, I think, is a very encouraging sign that maybe the ice is beginning to crack, that some people in America are waking up to the fact that the relationship we have with Riyadh is not good for the United States. It is not just. We've had the whole controversy of the so-called 28 pages of the 9-11 Commission report that, according to all accounts, single out Saudi support for the terrorists who committed the 9-11 attack on the United States. It's time to start waking up and to face this regime for what it is. And if it survives the House debate and should it get vetoed by the White House, um, <clears throat> what would be the grounds that the White House would veto this on? Oh, the grounds the White House would veto it on would be the assurances we have to our wonderful ally, Saudi Arabia, and this is so important to the American national interest. In other words, all the nonsense we've been force-fed for decades. And, and frankly, uh, yes, I don't expect this bill to be enacted now, but I expect it to be enacted eventually. But for the time being, it's sufficient to wrap this around Barack Obama's neck, let him reveal himself as essentially a stooge, for the Saudi regime, and I think that's it's an excellent thing to happen now during an election year. And ultimately, how could this bill affect Washington Riyadh relations, uh, Mr. Jatras? Well, I think the mere fact that it was passed by the Senate is something that the Saudis will not like. They will pour money, more money into their PR and media and lobby shops here in Washington. They'll make the rounds. But the good news is, I don't think this is sticking anymore. As your, as your first guest, Mike Harris, pointed out, this is the biggest supporter of state terrorism in the world. It has got the worst human rights record in the world. It is destabilizing Syria, supporting terrorists in Syria. It is committing a genocidal war in Yemen with, I'm sorry to say, the Obama administration's assistance. We have to take a, a real new look at Saudi Arabia and end this sweetheart relationship we have with these people. And just to go off the last uh, couple of sentences uh, you just mentioned, so why has, why has the White House been this lenient on the Saudi regime and allowed this uh, regime to act with such impunity? Because the, the bipartisan establishment operates on one big principle, and that's money. The Saudis throw a lot of money around Washington. They buy a lot of military equipment. They, they essentially own a huge part of the American establishment. And let's face it, Barack Obama is part of that. Thank you, Mr. Jotras, for your input, sir. That's Mr. James Jotras, foreign, former, that is, U.S. Senate foreign policy analyst, joining us out of Washington.